Hello, everyone. So you're right, I'm the tallest USB speaker in the stable. <laughs> it's a real privilege to be here today and to share a little bit about my keynote talk that I give at conferences and events. And my keynote talk is all about sharing some of the life lessons that I learned growing up with a physical disability. Um, although I think growing up, I never even knew that I was implementing these life lessons. And then these lessons that have been enhanced in my career as a clinical psychologist. So you'll learn from this presentation that I do things a little bit differently. So I actually type with my toes and click with my toes. I've got no magic um, abilities here with the clicker. And I also text with my tongue. I promise I can out-text everyone in this room. <laughs> so I'm grateful that the statue of the Venus de Milo proved to the world that a woman without arms can be stunningly beautiful. Like most of you, I think she's quite an attention seeker for not wearing a shirt, though. <laughs> These are my nephews, Daniel and James, and when they were little, they always used to say to me, Auntie Nikki, why are you so short? And I'd always reply that I never ate my vegetables. <laughs> I promise if you use that this evening with your children, they are going to eat their broccoli. <laughs> I try not to focus on what I can't do. I believe so strongly that everyone in this room has limitations, but those limitations are all in our heads, and it's definitely in our hands to change them. So the three life lessons I'm going to share with you today start with believe in yourself. In psychology, we have that debate, nature versus nurture. So are we born to be a certain way or is it our environment that determines who we become? Like most of you, I think it's a little bit of both. So I've brought along a video clip to show you about what I believe in nature. I was cute, wasn't I? <laughs> so I was born without arms and shortened legs, and there was no medical explanation for my disability. Fortunately for me, the nurture, my parents, they chose to focus on what I can do, not on what I can't do. So it was never the case of, can Nikki do this? It was always, well, how can Nikki do this? They believed in me. I believe that each one of us in this room was born with the same inner drive and absolute determination to do whatever you set your minds to. You can see that I'm on one major mission to finish all that porridge in my bowl. All of us were born with that inner drive. We never saw our limitations. We believed in ourselves. It's only as we grow older, we start to compare ourselves to others and start to doubt our abilities. That's where self-doubt starts. What do we need to do to ignite that inner drive to believe in yourself again? You can see me taking my first few steps took a little bit longer than most of you. My one leg is shorter than the other. But what I absolutely love about this video is that it's so clear that I never saw my physical limitations. So if I fell down, I'd just simply get up again. I believed in myself. You can see that I am extremely proud of taking my first few steps here. <laughs> so clearly from a young age, I love to be the center of attention. <laughs> this is me at a birthday party, and the blonde girl in the pink dress is my older sister, Karen. And the baby in the red baby grow that I think looks a little bit like Buddha is my little brother, Stephen. <laughs> Don't you wish you all had the flexibility of your youth? I definitely do. <laughs> I'm sorry, no matter how many times Paul asks me, I'm not doing that on stage. <laughs> It comes to my second life lesson, focus on what you can do, not on what you can't do. 
if you think about some of the things that you struggle with, a lot of the times the things that we struggle with are actually things that we've compared ourselves to others. Think about your office situation. Each person in the office has different types of strengths and weaknesses. But why do we spend so much time trying to improve on our weaknesses? Why don't we elicit the help of people that have our strengths, our weaknesses, and enhance our strengths, enhance our talents, and in a sense, enhancing our self-esteem? So something that I've learned as a clinical psychologist that every one of us has a disability or two. What are some of your disabilities? You know, Sir Ken Robinson said that every child without exception has special needs. It's just in some cases that we can see what they are. The thing is, it's obvious to see what some of my limitations are. And to be honest, if I had to write a list of all the things that I can't do, that list would be unending. The thing is, many of our disabilities are hidden. Perhaps your disability is that you're really grumpy on a Monday morning. <laughs> or maybe you have serious road rage and the F word keeps flying with the taxis in Santon. Perhaps your disability is that you multitask and you're always busy. I know that sounds like really um, sought after, but actually that can be a disability because you're never present. Whenever you're in a meeting, you're thinking of the next meeting. Whenever you're answering an email, you're thinking about the other emails in your inbox. Whenever you're making supper, you're updating your Facebook status at the same time as your children telling you about their day. Think about those hidden disabilities. The thing is, in positive psychology, we don't ignore what is wrong, but we focus more on what is right. I don't know if you've noticed that there are a lot of armless people doing great things in the world. It's almost like every week a friend of mine is sending me an email video clip or YouTube video saying, look at this armless woman, she can fly an airplane. Look at this armless man, he can play the drums. And I always reply, I'm so sorry, I'm such an underachiever. <laughs> The thing is, why is it that people that have such obvious limitations do so well? I think if we start recognizing that the limitations, challenges that we faced in life are there to make us unique human beings and strive to be the best that we can be. When we know what those limitations are, when I was born without arms, my parents knew what they had to focus on for me. They had to focus on my education, and they had to make sure that I never felt ashamed of myself. Viktor Frankl is a Ger German psychiatrist that was in a Nazi concentration camp. And he said that when we are challenged, when we're no longer able to change our situation, we are challenged to change ourselves. In psychology, sometimes we can't change our circumstances. No matter how much broccoli I eat, I'm just not going to grow a pair of arms. But things that I can do is I can change the way I think about my situation. Comes to my third life lesson, learn to tolerate uncertainty. Take a moment to think about something that's causing you stress or worry at the moment, something that's causing you a bit of anxiety. Okay, so you've got about 10 things in your mind now. <laughs> 11. Every single thing that we worry about is future related. We don't worry about the past. Sometimes we dwell on the past and that's what leads to depression. But we really tend to worry about future related events. And the thing is, we start to demand to know exactly what's going to happen in the future, and then we'll be okay. So some of the uncertainties that you might be facing are, am I going to make it to the next coffee break? Am I going to get that promotion at the end of the month? Are my children going to flourish at school this year? 
what is going to happen in the elections next week? What future do we have for our children in South Africa and actually in the world? Are we safe anywhere? If you think of that, how many of you know the answers to those questions? None of us do. And the thing is, we don't know the answers because we don't have a crystal ball. The best thing that we can do is to learn to tolerate uncertainty, to recognize that we cannot predict the future. We can just be more present and more mindful and focus on what we can do, focus on our strengths and hope for the best. You know, we don't live in a cotton wool world. Not everything goes our way. And when we build that resilience to be able to cope with change, with things that we hadn't expected, we recognize that everyone in this room can ignite that inner drive that you were born with. So one of the greatest uncertainties that I ever had was my mobility and independence. So I always had a dream to drive and to achieve the ultimate level of independence. And I knew it was possible because my parents had made contact with a woman in the UK who had a very similar disability to me. They actually found out about the woman by going to the library. That's a place where they keep books, by the way. <laughs> Imagine me being born in a world without Google. And this lady was driving an adapted car, and she had told me that driving for the first time had felt like she'd been given a pair of wings. So in 2001, when I was doing my honors in psychology, she was getting a new car and donated her car to me, which I drive today. So I know that seeing is believing, and some of you have already seen me drive my car and even have gone for a drive in my car, but I know whenever I do a presentation and I don't show this video, I, people get very cross with me. So I'm going to show you how I got my wings and how I drive my car in Cape Town. Hi, I'm Nikki and I'm gonna show you how to drive hands-free. Safety first is my seat belt. This is the biggest challenge of my driving day. There we go. And now we're going to start the car up. Okay. I'll have to open the windows. This is the joystick steering system that I use to drive. So I place my shoulder in the U-shaped cup and if I move my shoulder forward, it spins the wheel left. And if I move my shoulder backwards, it spins the wheel right. Okay, I'm driving an automatic car. So this is the accelerator pedal and this is the brake pedal. And positioned on the brake pedal are two electric switches, the one for the handbrake and the other one for the gear shift. So with my toe, if I press the brake in, I press the button to lift the handbrake up. And then I can also press the button to let the handbrake go down. And for the gear shift, it's also an electric switch. And with my toe, if I press the switch, it changes the gear from park to reverse to drive. Lastly is the infrared beeper system which I use for all the auxiliary functions of the car. I have a red big button at my left foot which has nine beeps and each beep is for a different function. So two beeps is left indicator, three beeps right indicator, seven beeps is the windscreen wipers.
<laughs> so I still haven't been pulled over by a traffic officer, by the way. Imagine his facial expression when I have to stick my foot out of the window and give him my driver's license. <laughs> So something that I love is changing perceptions of ability. And I think the day that I did that was the day that I walked into the traffic department at Stellenbosch to take my learner's license. So I think the traffic officer at that stage thought, okay, this is why she's studying psychology. She's completely delusional that she can drive. My car hadn't yet arrived in South Africa. And I remember so clearly the traffic officer finding a low table for me to do the questionnaire. And do you remember that learner's test? It was really tricky, that multiple choice. And I remember being stuck on a particular question and my pencil was an A. And the traffic officer looked down at my paper and then he looked up at me and he slowly shook his head from side to side. <laughs> And then I moved my pencil down to B, and he slowly nodded <laughs> up and down. I promise that was the only question that I had help with. <laughs> Imagine that same traffic officer's face when I arrived a few months later to take my driver's test. I managed to change his perception of what is possible. So the independence that driving gave to me motivated me to start a non-profit organization called Nikki's Drive. And all funds are actually raised through the talks that I give. And our organization funds car adaptions for people with disabilities in South Africa. So one thing all humans have in common is the desire to be happy. So often we think that happy people People that have, have everything in life are grateful. And actually, it's the other way around. Grateful people are happy people. Last Thursday, it was proved to me, I went to Port Elizabeth to give a talk, and the lady that offers passenger assistance when I arrived off the plane, she had this huge grin on her face. She had no teeth. And she said, hi, my name's Cynthia, and I'm here to help you. Welcome to Port Elizabeth. And that's a perfect example of someone who doesn't have everything, but is so grateful and so happy. So many people that have so many limitations, so many challenges in life are very happy, and it's because they've learned to implement gratitude in their life. So I'm going to ask each of you, what are you going to do to implement these three life lessons? Believe in yourself, ignite that inner drive that you were all born with, Focus on what you can do, not on what you can't do, and learn to tolerate uncertainty. After all, if we worry too much about tomorrow, how can we enjoy today? So something that I learned long before I ever stepped in that car is that if you've got the drive, the destination is really up to you. Something that I know when I look at that little girl taking her first few steps is that she saw no limitations and she believed in herself. So whenever I'm feeling faced by a challenge, I think of that little girl and I think of her letting go of the handlebars and proudly proclaiming, look mom, no hands. Thank you so much. <laughs>